All right, we're back again here. It's uh, Mike Desvartis and Anthony Dwyer. Uh, this is uh, Let's Build a Pelvis number two. In this video, we're going to add the pelvic diaphragm and we're going to review uh, a model of the pelvis containing some of the viscera. And we might talk a little bit about the pudendal nerve and internal pudendal artery. So let's get going here. All right, a quick review. This is the inguinal ligament. This is the sacroiliac ligament. This is the sciatic nerve. This is the lumbosacral trunk, L4-5. Sciatic nerve is L4-5, S1-2-3. Other ligaments, sacrotuberous ligament, sacrospinous ligament. From the inside, we can see the blue here is the obturator internus muscle. It's covering the obturator foramen and it gets tendinous and goes out the lesser sciatic foramen. Hidden by the sciatic nerve and its roots are the piriformis muscle, which comes from the anterior surface of the sacrum, goes out, and inserts on the greater trochanter along with the obturator internus. Okay, and from the front here you can see the obturator internus muscle right here, which would be covered by a membrane and the obturator externus muscle. Okay, short lateral rotators. All right, so what we're going to add here is the pelvic diaphragm. Here's your pelvic diaphragm. That's a group of muscles that helps to support the pelvic viscera, the bladder, and the uh, uterus in the female. It's made up of, the pelvic diaphragm is m basically made up of th three muscles. It's pubococcygeus, iliococcygeus, and a little bit of coccygeus muscle. Now if you leave out the coccygeus muscle, which is back here, and just focus on the pubococcygeus and iliococcygeus muscles. Then you've got the levator ani muscle, which helps to support the anus. All right, so let's put that in place. It's going to be a little funky, but, but we can do it because we're good. I mean, if Chuck Norris can count to infinity twice, we can put the pelvic diaphragm in the right place. So we want to pick up the coccyx a little bit there. And then in the front, we want to kind of cross the obturator muscle. Over on this side, we don't have an obturator muscle, so we'll just tack this down to the bone over here. We didn't do too bad there. You can see how the pelvic diaphragm, here it is, it cuts across the obturator muscle, almost cutting it in half. And this area right here is called the arcus tendineus, arcus tendineus, tendinous arch, where the pelvic diaphragm, or specifically the levator ani, crosses the obturator internus. Pelvic diaphragm is tacked down in the back to the coccyx and sacrum and kind of crosses a, across the ischiopumic rami. It has a little opening in the front which is reinforced by the by the uh, UG diaphragm which we talked about in another video. But this part is the arcus tendineus. It's kind of a sling which helps to support the pelvic diaphragm. All right, since we're here, why don't we put in, um, let's put in a hole here for the anus. So we'll put in the, we'll put in the anus right about here. That's a, that's a prolapse. That's clinically problematic there. But we can do a quick surgery right there. Look at that. 
Our Arcus Tendineus let us down here. But we can fix that. Claymation. We film our problems. We don't, we don't, you know, we've got nothing to hide here. Back to making an anus. There we go. We came up from below. And that opening would be. And in the front where the weakening is, where it's a little weaker in the front, is where the urethra is going to go through up here in the front. And that'll be strengthened. So this basically is where the anus would go through. This would be levator ani. This whole thing would be called the pelvic diaphragm if you throw in the coccygeus muscle, which is that little bit of muscle which coats the uh, sacrospinous ligament and it doesn't do much in a human. Might have wiggled a tail in the animal. All right, what else can we show before we go to the model? Well, coming off of spinal cord segments S234, uh, is the pudendal nerve. S234 keeps the junk off the floor. Now the pudendal nerve goes out the greater sciatic foramen along with the sciatic nerve. But it does a weird thing. And let's see if we can make it do our weird thing here. So this is our greater sciatic foramen. The obturator comes out our lesser sciatic foramen. So what happens here, here's the end of our pudendal nerve. So it's coming out the greater sciatic foramen, but it goes back in the lesser sciatic foramen. And let's see if we can do that. And as it does that, it's coursing over the sacrospinous ligament. So let's see if we can get that a little bit better. There we go. So it comes back down here, and can we see that? Oh, we're going to tilt a little bit. There we go. So that's the pudendal nerve, and the artery is going to take a similar route. See that? Now the blue is the obturator and turnus muscle. The purple is the pelvic diaphragm. There's a fascia that's going to cover the pudendal nerve and the internal pudendal artery. And that fascia makes up the pudendal canal or Alcox canal. So you can reach here beneath the pelvic diaphragm as it intersects the obturator internus and you'll find the pudendal vessels right there. And the artery is going to be in the same neighborhood doing approximately the same thing. And that's going to supply blood to the external genitalia, the UG diaphragm, the muscles of the UG diaphragm, parts of the scrotum or labia. So kind of out the greater sciatic foramen and then kind of looping around and using the lesser sciatic foramen to gain access to the perineum. Looping around the sacrospinous ligament or the ischial spine, pudendal nerve. All right, let's look at a model now. See if I can get my sticky fingers on this model. 
we'll keep things short and sweet. Do we have a bladder? Yes, we do. All right, so let's look here. Put together the... This is obviously a female. This is anterior. This is posterior. This is rectum. Uterus. Bladder. And you can see here how the bladder narrows and then you have the urethra. All right, here's the uterus and you can see the fallopian tubes are here and here coming up to the fimbria. So it's fimbria, infundibulum, ampulla, and then isthmus of the fallopian tube. These represent the round ligament. And what you can kind of tell, I'll open this up again. The uterus, the normal position of the uterus, it is antiverted. There's a bend here between the cervix and the vagina. That's antiversion. It's antiverted. And then it's flexed again right about here. That's antiflexion between the cervix and the uterus proper. So the uterus is, this is vagina, this is uterus. The uterus is antiverted and antiflexed. It's kind of like if you're standing up and if you bend at your hips, you're, you're antiverting a little bit, then bend again at your waist, you're antiflexed. And there can be all kinds of abnormal positions of that where it could be, it can be prolapsed, it can be bent at the wrong angle, et cetera, et cetera. This spot here is called the pouch, pouch of Douglas. It's the rectouterine pouch of Douglas. And this is the uterovesical pouch right here where tumors can grow or blood can collect, et cetera. And here's the inside of the bladder. And here is the rectum. Okay. I'll just show, I'll just show you how that sits in the model real quickly. There we go. Looking on the hemipelvis, we can kind of see how that sits in there. Just like that. The nice roots of the sciatic nerve here. The internal iliac artery, the external iliac artery. All right, let's remove that out and see if we can point out some of this vasculature on this model here. So it's aorta. Aorta splits into right and left common iliac. Common iliac splits into external iliac, turning into the femoral under the inguinal ligament. The internal iliac comes down here. It splits into an anterior division and a posterior division. Posterior division gives off an iliolumbar branch. Ilio lumbar, so it's kind of go into the iliac crest and the vertebrae here, the lumbar vertebrae, so it's iliolumbar. And then coming medially right here, it's cut, but that would be the lateral sacral. It's coming medial to make it to the lateral sacrum, if that makes sense to you, lateral sacrum. And finally, the posterior division ends as the superior gluteal artery the superior gluteal artery going out above piriformis. Now, the anterior division is the complicated division. It gives off the obturator artery, which sneaks out the obturator foramen or canal right above obturator internus muscle. Here's obturator internus muscle. Here, it's a little hard to see here, but this is that region of the arcus tendineus, that intersection between the pelvic diaphragm and the obturator internus. If you, this is coccygeus, and over here is pubococcygeus and uh, iliococcygeus. 
So this is levetiranei, these two parts, and this is coccygeus. Together, levetiranei and coccygeus makes up the pelvic diaphragm. What other arteries do we see here? Well, the main thing to remember when you're dissecting a cadaver is to name these arteries as to where they go because they're very variable. And some of the things we're going to see here, we're going to probably see um, inferior gluteal and internal pudendal artery. They don't have here, but that's probably what this one is, is the umbilical, which is going to become obliterated as it goes up onto the abdominal wall. And some of the other branches in the area are the superior and inferior vesicle in the male. In the female, the inferior vesicle uh, doesn't really exist. It's just a branch off the vaginal, which feeds the bladder. When you hear the word vesicle, it's bladder. You're going to have a middle rectal branch. And I mentioned the internal pudendal branch. In the female, you're going to have a uterine artery. In the male, you don't have a uterine artery. And Anthony, do you remember what artery feeds the testicles and the ovary? It's a tough question, but I thought I'd wake you up. Hello. Comes from the testes, remember, descend. So actually, their blood supply follows down. And the testes are supplied by the testicular artery, which comes off way high up in the aorta, way high up. The same thing with the ovarian artery, way high up, and then they descend down. So those are not really supplied by that, those branches. And on the back side of this model, they've got here the pudendal nerve. Again, you can see it leaving the greater sciatic foramen, crossing the sacrospinous ligament, and entering the lesser sciatic foramen to gain access to the perineum. This big yellow honker here, I'll give you a chance to redeem yourself, Anthony. That is the sciatic nerve. It has tibial and common peroneal parts. And this big muscle is the piriformis muscle. And I think we can wrap that up. That'll do good for Let's Build a Pelvis too. Thank you.